All right, hey guys, and welcome to today's video. Now, yes, in today's video, we're going to be tackling this terrible koi pond. Let's just cut right to the chase. So first things first, before we tackle the koi pond, which look at the koi are coming to say hi. They are so friendly and so active this time of year. I just love it. They come up to the surface. They try to greet you. Like they're just such personable fish. Like when you're feeding them, like they'll literally like come into your hand and try to eat out of your hand. They are so personable and I love these guys, but their home is looking a little bit nasty. So before we do that, Oh, by the way, actually, our lily pads are coming out of the water. That's dope. Well, they're almost out of the water. They're growing a little bit more. But like I said, before the koi pond, we have to come let the ducks out because they will get very mad at me if I do not let them out while I'm in the backyard. Okay, there we go. And I don't want them being super noisy like they are right now. Anyway, now that our really nice ducks are out here, just always kind, always super nice, uh, we can go ahead and start cleaning the pond. Oh my god, he won't leave me alone. He literally won't leave me alone. <laughs> okay, I'm currently being attacked by a duck. <laughs> Moving on. Anyway, first thing I'm gonna do is remove the skimmer basket, which is really not that dirty, so we don't even have to worry about that. But now that we've got the skimmer basket cleaned, I'm gonna take a broom and start sweeping up the pond. Now by doing this, it helps dislodge dirt that gets stuck between the rocks. It also helps dust off the sides of the pond and get any hair algae that is starting to form off of the walls. So I just go do this all the way around the pond. It does kick up a lot of debris, which is no big deal as you can see, because we're gonna be cleaning the filters. So we want all the debris up and in the water so we can clean it out when we backwash the filters. So I just go do this all the way around the pond. The koi really do not care or mind. It doesn't affect them at all. And then once we're done with this, like I mentioned, we're gonna go ahead and backwash the filter. So next up back here at the Owase canister filter, we're gonna go ahead and backwash it. So we start by just unscrewing this little cap right here which is, you know, just a water release cap. No big deal, get that off. Then we're gonna turn this to backwash. And then we have to start lifting this little lever. And once we start going like that to pump all the dirty water out, the water will change colors. We'll turn this to backwash it the other way. And we're just gonna do this until the water runs almost clear. Once the water is clear, we just flip it back and it's sending the water back into the pond. Next, I'm just gonna come over here and slide these off of the waterfall and then we're gonna clean the filters that are in here. So to access this, we just remove these clips right here, and this is probably the dirtiest filter in the whole pond. Now this is actually the final filter. The water comes through here right after going through the canister filter, but as you can see, it is still so nasty. So the canister filter doesn't miss a lot. Uh, it cannot be a primary method of filtration, obviously. Without this, you know, little spillway filter, the pond would probably be disgusting. But I'm just gonna take all of these pads out right here and get them out of the water, try to get as much algae with them as I can, and then we're gonna go hose all these down. Of course, there's still a whole bunch of dirt in there, there's nothing we can really do about that. The ducks are trying to eat the filter. Guys, that's not food. You can't eat that. Okay. So now what I'm gonna do is literally just take the hose and just start spraying these down. It does take a while, but it's definitely worth it. Now you could rinse this off in pond water, but I don't, that's just too much work. You need the high power jet of the hose to really get all this algae off. Kind of oddly satisfying though, not gonna lie, like look at that. I don't know, kind of nice. This one's actually even better, right here. Like just that nice white that's right below it that you can't see because of all that nasty stuff. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish hosing both of these off and then we can put them back in the pond and finish up cleaning it. Six and a half hours later. Okay, so now that those are all clean, I'm gonna come in here and flip this switch and turn off the pond. And now that the filtration is stopped, I can put all these bio balls back and we can put the pond filters back in. So we start with the coarse one right here, then these little edge pieces, like so. Then we do the fine polishing pad right on top. And then we put the little tray right back, snap it on, put the rock back on, and we're done with the waterfall filter. Now we can turn the pond right back on the waterfall will go ahead and fill up as the water passes from the skimmer over there into the filter, back into the waterfall, and then here comes the waterfall. So now all the filtration is cleaned, all we have to do is wait for the pond to go ahead and finish filling up, then we'll let it clear up just by the filters, and then we can feed the fish. By the way, look at how big these rosy red minnows are, by the way, like they're, they're kind of huge. These are just feeder minnows from PetSmart, and they're, they're getting pretty big. But I'll be back when this water is nice and clear. Also, quick side note, sometimes I use this uh, little water vacuum to clean out the bottom of the pond. Uh, if you want to know more about this little vacuum, I have a whole video about it on my channel, so feel free to check that out. But right now, I'm just filling up the pond with just the hose, and then we'll, and then we'll be back once it's full, like I mentioned. 
So it is a little bit later and I'm not gonna lie, the pond looks very similar. Not sure what that fish is doing upside down down there, but we missed a few things. For example, all these rocks that normally cover up that hose have fallen off. So I need to get in there and fix them by putting the rocks back on top of the hose to cover them up. I'll do that in a few minutes off camera. And then also, there's more string algae. So what I'm gonna do is put up this umbrella right here that's gonna shade the pond and help prevent some of that algae from growing. However, we can go ahead and feed the fish, get them to come up to the surface and say hi to us before we go ahead and do that. So these are my koi. I believe there is around five or six koi fish in here. Uh, two of them are from Petco and then a couple of them came online from Next Day Koi, which came last year. I have a video about that when I unboxed some koi fish that came in the mail. Uh, and then we also have some assorted comet goldfish. In fact, that white goldfish right there, I've had for like four years, maybe even five years. I don't know. I've had that goldfish for a super long time and now they are living it up in this huge 1000 gallon pond. And that's pretty much it for the koi pond. Honestly, everyone in here is doing really good. Yeah, it's dirty. The fish don't seem to care. I do have a whole bunch of plants. I do have a whole bunch of plants coming for this pond. As you can see, a lot of them died back during the winter. The lily pads are starting to come up, which is good. But I have a whole bunch more pond plants coming. So that will be seen in a later video. But that is it for the outdoor pond. Everything is doing really good. Quick update on the nano reef from last video. The fish we added is doing absolutely great. All of the waving hand corals are also doing good and if you can see they're starting to attach to the substrate which is really nice because it means they won't blow around anymore. And then our zoanthid frags are also doing really well. Some of them haven't quite opened yet but then again it's only really been two or three days since I've cut them but in the next week or so they should all be opening up. But the ones that have opened up do look good so that is amazing. But yeah that's pretty much it for the reef tank, the nano reef at least, everything is doing really well. Okay so this right here is my white cloud minnow aquarium. Now these minnows um, are feeder minnows. I bought them for very cheap. And I put them in here to grow up until they were full grown, which they are almost full grown. And now we can go ahead and put them in the outdoor mini pond. These are great pond fish. They do absolutely amazing in cold weather. And they really don't get too big. This is almost their max size. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab these guys real quick and start transferring them into the pond. And then obviously we're gonna have to acclimate them because it is a little bit colder out there. But I'm gonna net all of these guys out really fast, which is easy because, I mean, they're minnows. And then we can go acclimate these guys into our mini pond where they can go in there and thrive. That is a 110 gallon pond, so they will have plenty of room out there and potentially even breed. I've actually bred these guys in a pond very similar to that one before. So we have some pretty good chances going on. But I'm gonna finish netting all these guys out and take down the aquarium and then we can go ahead and start acclimating them. Well, that is it for this aquarium. I'm gonna go ahead, finish breaking it down and then start acclimating our white cloud minnows into the new mini pond in the front yard. Here is that 110 gallon mini pond. Now I did put a few um, like just feeder minnows from PetSmart in here. Not these white cloud minnows, they were just like rosy red minnows. But I'm gonna stick these guys here to acclimate and then we can go ahead and introduce them to the pond after about 20 minutes because this temperature of water is a little bit colder than inside. However, with minnows or at least white cloud minnows, they are very temperature tolerant so it's no big deal. Later. Okay, so it has been about 20 minutes and it is now time to acclimate our white cloud mountain minnows into our pond. Well, not acclimate, dump them in. They're already acclimated. So I'm just gonna simply let these guys go right out into the pond. Now they don't stand out too much, unfortunately. They do blend in very well, but they should come up to the surface when we feed some food, and then hopefully we'll get some more colorful fish in here soon after it's kind of finished cycling. These guys are still in here while it's cycling. It's mainly cycled for the most part, but you know, it's about one week off from being perfect. So these fish will do fine, they're super hardy though, and then we can maybe introduce something like some fancy goldfish or a koi, and then once that fish gets too big for this pond, it will go in my 1,000 gallon koi pond. The next day. Quick update on the 120 gallon reef. I had a big issue with cyano in here uh, two days ago, and I threw ChemiClean in the system, and it cleaned it right up, so I highly recommend ChemiClean. It completely got rid of my cyano. I also tried to clean the sump up a little bit. It's dark, but you can kind of see and redid my refugium chamber. You can't see it really. Uh, skimmers overflowing from the chemi clean. Same thing with the filter socks. So I'm gonna do a water change, clean out the filter sock. But first, I'm just gonna feed these guys some nori. And this right here is just a little seaweed floater. They love seaweed. Um, it's one of their main parts of their diet. So they're just gonna go ahead and eat that seaweed as it floats around. Of course, it floats in the bad part of the tank with the glare. But that's pretty much it for the 120 gallon reef tank. Everyone in here is doing really good and the tank's doing pretty good as well. Two hours later. And so now I'm just currently mixing up some salt water for the 120 gallon as well as the five gallon salt water aquariums. Then I'm gonna do a water change and we'll be done with salt water for the day. 
And yeah, that is gonna be pretty much it for this video. The pond is looking a lot better. We still have some small tweaks to do, but overall things are looking so much better. And then in a few days, the sun's probably gonna shine on it, grow some algae, and we're gonna be back at square one. But there is an umbrella right there. So that's good. We're gonna hopefully get some shade, which should prevent some of the algae from going, but we're just gonna have to see kind of where it goes, how it happens. And we're just gonna hope that the spring doesn't completely destroy my pond like it's done in the past. But that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching and good bye.